So, as some of you may know, I mentor a middle and high school robotics program. In addition to teaching these kids skills such as teamwork and project management, I also teach them things like machine design, programming, and fabrication. So when Creality reached out to me, offering to send me their new Falcon 2 Pro laser cutter, I know just the people to help me test it. So come along on this adventure. So quick disclosure, Creality did send this laser to me free of charge. No money changed hands. I took it directly to school where I did the unboxing and assembly. That's why I'm doing a voiceover. So the machine was packed in a lot of foam. It was all cut to fit all the parts. Everything was there. All the pieces, screws, tools, everything you need to work on the machine. And some basswood to test with. So I got out the instructions. I actually read them and put the machine together. Came with the screws, of course. Instructions were not that hard to follow. Basically, the machine itself is mostly pre-assembled. You have to add the laser head. They sell two different versions of this, 22 or 40 watts. And you have to add the plastic top. I think that's just to shrink the size of the packaging. Plastic was a bit challenging to slide in there, but not a big deal. Overall, the assembly only took me like half an hour. So I got the sliding panel in, the fixed panel. There's an LED here that lights up the work area and a camera that looks down. So the laser head itself just has a connector that plugs in and the air hose and it came with some cable ties to get it all neatened up. It also came with a whole bunch of metal grates. You stack them all up in the bottom and your work sits on this. After putting the top on you can screw in the sides. It also comes with a vent fan to get rid of fumes. This is very important with some materials that you get the fumes vented out to a charcoal filter or outside. It also comes with about six feet of flexible hose and a clip to clip it onto the fan. And I take that hose and I slide it under the garage door every time I use this machine. There's also an air pump on the side and that's for the air assist. And we're all done. Before we get started cutting with this thing, let's have a little chat about laser safety. A lot of the students are really scared of one tool, the bandsaw. But that's not the most dangerous tool in this shop. So with a tool like the bandsaw here, you're not getting all into it. The dangerous part is the blade here. And as long as you hold your piece safely, it's not nearly as scary as you think. Now the opposite is true for a laser cutter like this. The laser beam is invisible. You can't see it with your eye, but it will blind you very quickly. It can also burn too. That's why this unit has a fully enclosed bed. There's also sensors here that detect when the door is open and when the drawer is open. And it won't let you run the machine if either of these are open. It's definitely something that's nice to see on a machine like this because there are cheaper machines out there that don't have any of this enclosure and can hurt you very quickly. I also sent a pair of stylish laser glasses. So let's talk materials. Laser cutter came from Creality with some pieces of two millimeter bass wood. This is excellent to get started. It smells great when you cut it. You can engrave pictures on it. You can see I got some cutouts here where I engraved a picture of Kevin the Minion so that uh, Kevin the student could have a trinket. But what I really care about doing robotics is plastic. The robots are mostly made of metal, but we're allowed to use different types of plastic, and we do. Most of the students do CAD work to design their plastic sheets. Some of them just YOLO it. But I got three different types of plastic that we would commonly use. Only some of them are laser safe. So make sure whatever you do, you're being very aware of what materials you have and their laser safety. Just because a laser can cut through a lot of things doesn't mean that the gases released from burning them with the laser are safe for you. First up, I have a piece of ABS. This is a plastic. I don't know, the A, the B, and the S all stand for things. The A and the B and the S are all carcinogens. When you burn ABS with a laser, it releases all of those toxic chemicals, some of which are highly flammable and will burn in your laser. So. No ABS on the laser. Next up, I have Delrin, also known as acetyl. This stuff is great for making robots. Unfortunately, it's also relatively transparent to the diode laser in the Creality. So it was not able to cut this. I've heard rumors that CO2 lasers can do it better, but this is a diode laser. That's what I got. Third on my list, I've got polycarbonate. This is a great material also. It's not brittle like acrylic. Acrylic tends to fracture when it breaks. Polycarbonate will crack, but it won't explode. So this is the material I'm primarily going to be using on the laser cutter for robot making. 
course, I'm also doing graphics and stuff like that, and I'll show that all of you in this video. Unfortunately, it does burn, so I end up with charred pieces like this. I don't know if you can see the char here, because it's pretty clear. But this is what comes out of laser cutter. It is smoky and charry. It's not toxic, but it's still something you should be careful of, and that's why I vent the fumes outside. So let's see some demos. So Creality included an SD card with a bunch of information, including the manual, assembly instructions, and parameter recommendations. So I read through these parameter recommendations. They have a recommended power, work speed, and number of passes. And I looked at these and I use these for the test cuts I'm about to do. So Creality includes this little focusing jig. You just loosen the laser, drop it on the focusing jig, tighten it up, and it's at the right height for the work. They also sent a piece of two millimeter basswood, which I'm using for this template. One of my Discord members suggested a meme. So we're going to raster the meme by going back and forth in varying intensity and then cut it out afterward. So we're using two different settings for raster engraving and then cutting. This is sped up 20 times. So it took a few minutes to do this. Settings I used for the engraving and the cutting are on screen if you're curious. Now it's going to cut out the piece, so this is at actual speed. The machine also has a built-in smoke detector, fire detector, but I turned this off for the materials I'm working with, especially the polycarbonate. And we're all done, this falls out. Up next, I've got polycarbonate. I'm just going to cut a circle out of this. This cuts pretty slowly. I have to move a lot slower than it did in the basswood. But this is the bread and butter of what the laser ends up doing for the robotics kits. So here you can see we're running the laser at much higher intensity to cut this piece out. We're also running it much slower. But uh, we'll have a circle when we're done. This is an actual speed, by the way. So it's a bit charred, but it's a hole that's dimensionally accurate. That's what the robotics kids need. Up next, I'm gonna engrave on some laser safe vinyl. Now, vinyl is normally not laser safe because vinyl and PVC uh, releases chlorine gas when you burn it but they make laser safe vinyl graphics. And so I'm just sticking it onto the bed here with tape to tension it so it doesn't bubble up. Then I'll let the laser go at it and we'll have some nice vinyl cut logos to stick on our robot. This one is actual speed as well. It can just whip through this when it's engraving. And there we go, some logos. So a software I've been using with this laser cutter is Lightburn. Lightburn is a commercial software, but it is available for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. I'm using it on Mac OS. It's really not that expensive. You just need the basic G-code license for this laser, and it's only 60 bucks. So the reason I chose Lightburn is because it's so easy for students to use, because that's essentially what's gonna end up happening. Um, there are open source alternatives if you don't want to pay the 60 bucks, but if you're buying a $1,200 laser, it's probably a good investment. So the students do CAD and Onshape, so they end up with parts that look kind of like this. In order to export them for the laser, I have to switch over to metric. So we'll switch that to millimeters, and then I'll just click on the surface we want to cut, and export as DXF. So let's go with that. Once that's done, I can come over here and import, and click on the DXF, and... There we go. So we're about the right size, about the right shape. Not that hard to do. Over here we can set the speed and power. So for polycarb, I'd use 125 and 75. And that's pretty much it. So I didn't want to put any of my students on camera, but here's one of their robots. So I can show you some of the laser cut pieces. Of course, sometimes they do CAD and sometimes they just cut the black plastic with scissors in a mess. But it's up to them if they choose to do the work of CAD and get the benefits of laser. So this is a relatively simple part that was on the bottom of their intake before. 
has some holes in it for mounting, some cutouts for ball to recess, that kind of thing. They took the time to design it in CAD, which might have taken longer than it would have taken them to lay it out by hand to make one, and then we cut it on the laser. The laser only took about five or 10 minutes. But then, in the future, when they drove their robot into a pole and broke this piece, they were able to come to me and say, hey, we already have a CAD model, can we just make another one? 10 minutes later, they had another one. So once you've put the time and effort in to do the CAD model, making more of them on the laser is very easy. They can keep making spares over and over and over again, 10 minutes per part, maybe less. This part's probably about five minutes. Some other laser cut parts we have on the robot are these wings here. These fold out to push balls. They're in a place that can get easily broken. So they wanted to make some spares. So they did a CAD model. They sent me the DXF of the flat piece. Laser cutter cut it out, cut all the mounting holes. Then they just had to bend it by hand. So for a relatively simple part like this, they may have been able to lay it out, draw the holes accurately, etc., by hand. But they wanted to make two of them for this robot, and they wanted to make a set of spares too, four of them. And when you start looking at duplication like that, an extra five minutes per part in the laser is a lot easier than the time it takes you to hand lay out and drill and cut all these parts. Of course, they have some nice graphics too, this Extreme Bot. This was all cut on the laser as well, out of that laser save vinyl. We use masking tape to transfer it onto this, and it looks great. Another use case for the laser is for prototyping parts. So these white pieces here, they're actually made out of Delrin, which the laser can't cut, but the laser can cut polycarbonate, which is the same thickness. The downside of the polycarbonate is that it cracks, it's not as slippery, so it would break off in this case, unlike the Delrin. But we can make a prototype part on the laser in under five or 10 minutes. So every time we make a design change, 10 minutes later, we have a part ready to go. This part of Delrin was made on the router, which takes considerably longer. So I hope this gives you an idea of some of the advantages we found in using this laser. So after all that, what's a good way for me to wrap this up? I've had the laser for almost a month now in the robotics lab. In that time, the four teams of mine that made it to the World Championship have all cut pieces on the laser, whether that's plastic or even just graphics, they've done something with it. I've had a pretty good experience as well. It wasn't all that hard to assemble. It has a nice enclosure, which I think is pretty much a must for safety reasons. You could buy a lower end laser and build your own box, but I didn't want to do something like that for the kids in the lab. So having not used a laser before, I was impressed with how easy the software was. That of course is Lightburn, not Creality software, but their laser plugged right into Lightburn, everything just worked. Another thing I've noticed in use is that um, the color of the plastic does change things a bit. So it's roughly a 450 nanometer laser, at least that's what I can find and different plastics react to that differently. You need the laser beam to heat up the plastic in a localized area to melt it so the air can blow it away. And for some plastics, they just don't absorb 450 nanometers, they don't heat up. That's the problem we have with Delrin or Acetyl. It doesn't absorb that wavelength, it doesn't get warm. Now I didn't try going thicker. The laser should be able to do like six millimeter, which is quarter inch wood, like the basswood or balsa wood, things like that. So if you like building things out of wood, this could definitely work for you as well. So for me, the best thing about having a laser is letting the kids use it in the lab. And so the laser has the full enclosure, the interlock switches, etc. So I can feel confident with them using it around me. I know that's not necessarily a feature of the Creality specifically, but I'm very thankful for Creality to sending this my way so the kids can use it. If you have any questions about other things you'd like to use the laser for, feel free to message me on my Discord or comment down below or anything. If you're an educator or run another robotics team and want some advice, I can help you there as well. I'm already working out plenty of ideas on what I'm going to do with the laser in the future. So the robotics team is going to get lots of lots of fancy graphics, I'm sure. They're just so easy to make with the laser save vinyl, so quick, and really not that hard to take a drawing from a student, turn it into a vector, and go. If you're interested in buying the laser, I have some links down below to Creality. Thanks to them for sending this to me for this video. If you want to chat with me directly, I have a link to my Discord down below. Also have my Kofi if you want to tip me anything like that. And as always, I'll see you guys on the next adventure.